calm sort of authority that comes with a long time in the team, a lot of runs. It doesn't matter whether you're under, your play, uh, under pressure for your place, you, you, you still retain your sense of self and presence and calm. Well, I mean, when I look at him, he reminds me of Hashim because Hashim also, every time I saw him, and I, I mean, this is the first time I've, I've had the opportunity to actually sit with him. But watching Hashim bat, you know, there's a sense of calm you know, that everything is under control. My, you know, the ball could be doing things, but there was that sense because even on pitches where the ball, ball was turning, the way Hashim was batting in India, it was almost as if, look, nothing's happening. And that's the same thing with Cheteshwar Pujara. It is, a, it is a great, great blessing to have players of this temperament in your dressing room, not necessarily just on, on the field. It's a huge plus. And I think having somebody with Cheteshwar Pujara's temperament in that change room must be an, an absolute, I mean, terrific. Because there, there are, in, in international cricket, several moments of tension, several moments where, you know, people are wanting to do this, that or the other. But when you have some somebody you know who's going to be thinking about it calmly, giving a you know a, a measured opinion, a measured view, it makes a big difference. Mm. Did you work on the Zen mind? I believed in fake it till you make it, Mark. And uh, so, <laughs> so even though you even though you did feel those nerves and things, you just you know got down to to the facts of the situation, and uh, and I just tried to go on there. All time great quote. <laughs> I believe in fake it to make it. Unbelievable. I mean, yeah. this is a different side, yeah. and I'm loving it. I tell you, the two of them have got the cheekiest sense of humor as you can imagine. <laughs> and beware, you know, you put a step out of line and they're onto you super quick. Okay, so you didn't particularly work with, with any side of, of, of mental improvement or mental structure, it was already inherently a part of your game. Mark, it's hard to answer that. I, I do feel that people are, have an intrinsic nature that they've brought up with. We've had many uh, growing up in the South African system. There were many coaches you, uh, you know, you interact with that impart different knowledge. And, and maybe I just managed to absorb more from one coach or the other. I had a coach called Phil Russell. You, you might have yeah, played Phil, for yeah. Derbyshire. Um, Many, many years ago, I attribute a lot of, um, of my cricket to him um, and many coaches along the way. And the mental game comes naturally to some guys and, and, and rather than others, so and I'm scrambling to try and explain it. Uh, but we know uh, one of the batsmen who I really enjoyed watching initially and then uh, playing with was Jacques Callas. Um, you had a look at his mental preparation, his mental game. Um, he may not have spoken all a lot in the change room or outside the change room, but he was somebody who you learn by uh, observing. And I tried to observe and, him. And what were the standouts for you in Jacques' whole demeanor? Yeah, that is exactly as Sunny said. He was very measured. He prepared exceptionally well. Um, and you, ba you use the facts that are on the table. For example, in this type of wicket, it's a difficult wicket, uh, but not that difficult. The fact that four or five people in each innings have managed to get in means that you can get in. Uh, so that already tells you, hold on, if I just apply myself, a touch of fortune here and there, I can get into this wicket. Um, what happens after that, you can't control. So it's the old cliche, control what you can control, the controllables. Um, and that's what I took from batting with Shark and having the, the great fortune of playing with him for many years. And then obviously when you watch around the world, mentioned on air, on air yesterday, Raul Dravid, another player who you, when I watched, I got the sense of what Sunny is saying, guy who's really focused on what he wants to do, uh, leaves the distractions aside, and I think that makes the, a successful top order batter, because when you, bat, batting at the top order is the hardest thing to do. I often, I used to wonder how, so, no, go on, no, go on, I'm interested. I used to wonder like Graham Smith, he's captaining the team, we're in the field for 150 overs, get the ninth or the last wicket, and you see him run off, put his pads on, freshen up, and he's out facing the new ball. Yeah. That's the most, the toughest thing I can do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So